Hi, this is David Wicks, Director of Instructional Technology at Seattle Pacific University. In this screencast, we want to address six questions about the use of rubrics for assessment in Blackboard. Before we get started, uh, I want to strongly encourage you to watch an associated uh, screencast by David Denton. Uh, from Seattle Pacific University. In his screencast, he defines rubrics, uh, helps uh, faculty construct them, and so really um, you should watch that presentation first. If you already know how to create rubrics, then uh, you can begin with this. Here are our questions. Uh, the first one, we want to know uh, what preparation we need to do uh, before uh, putting a, a rubric in Blackboard. Second, we want to know actually how do you enter it into uh, Blackboard. Third, how would you edit a rubric once it's in Blackboard. Um, fourth, um, how do you associate it then with an assessment. Fifth, uh, how do you grade with the rubrics. And then finally, uh, how do you look at a report that was generated uh, from the rubric tool in Blackboard. What preparation should you do before putting a, a rubric in Blackboard? Well, first you should make sure you know the, the criteria that you want to assess. So uh, if you've got four categories or six categories, whatever that is, you should know what they are and, and the total number. You should also know what the levels are. So if you're looking at something where you're uh, going to define the levels as four, three, two, and one, or you're saying something like exemplary, proficient, needs improvement, you should have an idea or you should ha have it in your mind what those are going to be. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier once you're working in Blackboard. And then strongly recommend with uh, David Denton's uh, recommendation that you use a spreadsheet or a table to organize these criteria and the levels before you go to Blackboard so that they can just be copied and pasted. Uh, and so if you use uh, a tool like Rubistar, as, as David Denton has suggested, so here's uh, Rubistar that you can go through uh, and you can just start at the bottom and, and actually uh, click on one of these links and then you can go in and, and actually edit an existing rubric or you create your own and um, this is actually one that I created in Rubistar but if regardless if I if I get it into a spreadsheet to where we're seeing uh, our criteria over here on this side and we see our levels 4321 across the top uh, and then we see uh, a description for each category uh, so that it's very clear uh, how to score the students and students can also see what the expectation is of them. Once you either have a spreadsheet or a, a table, word table, uh, filled in, then you're ready to, to go put the rubric into Blackboard. You can see the five steps here for doing that. I'm going to walk you through those. So we go to Blackboard. Down below we see the course tools link in the control panel. We'll click on that and under course tools we see rubrics. We'll click on that and we'll see that there are a couple of rubrics already here but you're going to click the create rubric button and you'll name your rubric. So uh, in my case uh, in my spreadsheet here mine was uh, a, for digital storytelling so I'm going to come back and just call it digital uh, storytelling. Could go ahead and give a description here. You know, I'm going to leave that blank just to, to save a little time. And then we come down here and this is where it's again critical that you know what you need. So if we're starting here we can see that there's one, two, three default uh, criteria and one, two, three default levels. And so if we go back to my rubric uh, that I created with the help of Rubistar. I have one, two, three, four, five categories and four levels. So I want to make sure those are the same. So I'm just going to come back over here. And so if I add a row 
then I'm adding uh, a criterion. If I add a column, then I'm adding a level. And so I needed one more level, so I'm going to add one column. And I'm going to change the names of those columns. So in mine, uh, I have them named 4 is the highest, then 3. Looks like I need to go over just a little bit more to finish that one out. I needed five total level or five total criteria, and I have three so far. So I'm going to add two rows. There's one row, and I'm going to add another row. Okay, now that we've added those two rows, we'll go ahead and, and change the names of these. So I'm going to edit that name f uh, for the formatting one, and I'm going to change it to be point of view. So this is going to become point of view. And you want to keep these names uh, fairly short. So you may have longer description in the spreadsheet than you uh, want in Blackboard. The next one is voice dash pacing. Then we have images. duration and our last one is uh, point of view and you might notice these uh, percents here and and noticing that some of them show up as zero uh, we're going to turn our rubric into one that's displaying points. Uh, so I'm going to change this to points. So the rubric type from percentage, you can use percentage, uh, but I'm going to change mine to points. And then it doesn't show me uh, those values now. I don't see the percentages. In my case, this is worth the 20 points. Uh, so I'm just going to, I would just go through here and I would change these. So this would be four points, three points, two points, and one point. And in this case, if I was going to make these the same as the level numbers, uh, you might make an argument that I would change those uh, up at the top to say exemplary, um, proficient, needs improvement, something along those lines. Uh, to give it some descriptive terms. Let me just quickly get these all in so that if we want to actually use the rubric, we can. Okay, now I've given um, all of them values, and so I'm ready to, to fill in these text boxes uh, so that students, when they're seeing those and when I'm grading, that I have something to go off of uh, in terms of what I should be looking for for each criterion. So I'll just come back here, and I'm just going to select the text in this box, copy it, and come back here and paste it. And so I'm doing that. Um, and this is, if you've done a good job of um, setting up your spreadsheet or your table, then you should be just very quick in being able to go through this and copy and paste. You can also note that these boxes aren't exactly the greatest size in the world to look at. You do have the ability to, to stretch them out. Okay, so we've copied and pasted uh, all, the, all of the descriptions. Again, you would want to give this a, a bit of a review here, but we can go ahead and submit this and then we can take a look at it. Okay, we can see digital storytelling here. We can just click on the drop down menu here and edit it uh, if necessary and come back in and, and edit these fields. Uh, let's return to our presentation now and look at our next question. And, and that is, is how do you edit that rubric grid? If, for example, we possibly decided uh, that there was actually a, a fifth level that was needed or we need one fewer, it is possible for any of these. So let's say we change these to be exemplary, proficient, and needs improvement, and we don't have a first level here. 
well we can click on this drop down here and we can delete the column okay same way if we've decided that in uh, the images aren't that important we can click on the drop down uh, here and delete the row we also have the ability to change the uh, rubric type if we didn't like the straight points and we wanted to switch to a point range or a percentage uh, we would just select that here and then make the adjustments to uh, weight the, the criteria appropriately. How do you associate a rubric with an assessment? We have our, our completed rubric here. I'm going to submit it again in case I just made a little change there. And so now we're ready to associate it with an assessment. So let's say that our digital storytelling project is one that's due and we want to create an assignment area for it. So I'm going to now go into a content area in Blackboard and you know you're in a content area not because it says content up here um, but because it has these four menus that you can uh, choose from. Okay so we're gonna go in and we're going to create an assessment we're gonna create an assignment and so we're gonna call this digital storytelling project and we would include the instructions here. It's most likely in something like this that we would be asking students to submit uh, like a YouTube URL because they would have created this digital story. I'm just gonna say directions here. Leave those up to you to determine what they are. You, now as we scroll down, we can enter the points here, but if we've used a rubric with points, it will share those points uh, with us and so it's a uh, you can go either way if you've made your uh, rubric based on percentages you could change the point value of your project without changing the rubric well we've gone with points so I'm going to leave that I'm going to select a rubric here you could also create a new rubric at this point or you could bring up a rubric that you've used in the past and make modifications to it but I'm going to select the select rubric choice. I'm going to check the digital storytelling rubric and submit. Okay, and now it tells me to click OK to assign the rubric's maximum points as the points possible. So when I click OK, it's it's making sure it says 20. So if you do use points, you probably want to allow that so that the uh, points for the rubric uh, match the points possible. Okay. Now let's look down here in the yellow. This first area here indicates to us that we've got the digital storytelling rubric. We could switch rubrics. We can click and change which rubric we're actually using. The second space, this type, says it's being used for grading. So the alternative there is that it's used as a secondary evaluation. Uh, the final column here is the most important and something that uh, David Denton made reference to in his screencast and that's you most likely will want to choose this uh, setting to say yes uh, with rubric scores. Most of the time when we're using rubrics we want to make the target very clear for the student. Okay then in terms of uh, availability these are things that you are familiar with in other parts of Blackboard. Fill in the rest of these fields the way you normally would and click submit and now we have our uh, digital storytelling uh, project rubric. So how do you now grade these? So let's show how students submit them and then we'll show how uh, we would grade them. If you were the student coming in you would have been instructed to go to the content area and to click on the, this link and once you clicked on that link uh, you would have been asked to put in the URL uh, so I'm just going to put the URL of my blog in. You would also be telling the students in your direction, make sure they check the rubric. So if they click view rubric here, pops up in a window and they can actually then look at each criterion and see what the levels are. So they would have looked at that and um, been given directions to enter, you know, either text, uh, possibly they could be, be um, told to attach a file um, but whatever the directions were uh, they've done that and they click submit
And by doing that, they'll see that they've uh, completed it and they can review the submission history if they need to, to verify that. That would have been from the student's perspective. From the instructor's perspective, this is where the needs grading feature in the Grade Center uh, is really helpful. I've given students a, a project to do, I've given them a deadline, and what I as an instructor can do is uh, go to um, the Grade Center, click once, uh, there's a link that says needs grading, I click that, and now I just see who actually needs their project graded. So I'm going to tell it that I want to grade all these projects. And it pops up the first one. And it gives me a, a URL there, uh, which this was a, just a test. So uh, I would copy that URL into a browser and review their, their submission. Um, and then as the instructor, when I click this view rubric, the student was just seeing it almost like it was just a web page or a text document. When I'm seeing it, I'm, I'm able to see, okay, they did turn it in on time. I can give them feedback on that if I want. They didn't give me all the references, so uh, maybe I can say that inline references were missing. They shared a resource, everything looked good there. It relates to the instruction. They demonstrated understanding. Maybe they forgot to uh, attach an artifact. No artifact found. The heading was fine. Tags and categories and standards were fine. Uh, they did interact with somebody else's post. So note here that it's giving a raw score of 17 out of 20. That's what it added up based on the boxes that I selected. I can give a manual. Uh, change of a score there. Then I would just click Save and by doing so it's put the 17 out of 20 here. I could give some type of overall feedback here and then I can come to the bottom as I can choose Save and Next. I'm on to grading the next student's work Here's their URL. I open that up. I'm looking at it. I open up the rubric and let's just say I'm giving them feedback. And when I'm done here, it looks like they also got 17 out of 20 and I click save. Again, I can give feedback. and I can click Save and Exit. It's now showing me that there are no more that need to be graded. I don't have to go look in the Grade Center to see if there's any more work to assess. It's finished. And if I'm doing this over, you know, maybe a three or four day period, I might have a lot of the grading done just by doing them two or three at a time uh, as they come in. One other advantage of that is it's honoring students who get their work done either earlier on time by grading their work first. Here we can see the grade book. It's, uh, these are not uh, real students or real scores, so I don't have any kind of a FERPA violation here. But if we scroll the way over, um, the second to last column we can see is the assessment for the rubric that I was just using. If I didn't want um, anyone to see their score until I was finished grading all of them, I can click on this link here and choose to show hide to users. And by doing that, I, I get a little uh, circle with a line through it saying that this uh, column is not visible to the users. So students would not be able to see their score in this column until all students had a score. And then I would come back and choose this Show Hide again, and it would make it available. And each uh, person would see only uh, his or her score uh, for that assignment. So let's jump back to our presentation here. So you can use rubrics with lots of different things. You can use it with group assignments, individual assignments, discussion board posts. Uh, you can have it with essay questions on a test. Once you've got all your grading done, 
we want to take a look at a evaluation report. Uh, maybe it will tell us things uh, such as uh, where we have holes in our instruction. Maybe there are, will be places we'll see that all students are missing points. Maybe we'll see that our rubric is too easy, uh, too difficult, but we want to take a look at the reports and, and see uh, how students are being scored. So we come back, uh, we'll, we'll get out of the Grade Center, and we're going to go back into Course Tools, back to Rubrics, and here, B Portfolio Blog Post was the assignment that we graded. So I'm going to click on that link, and I'm going to click View Associated Content. And if I had used this same rubric uh, for 10 modules, I would see a list of 10 there. And so I'm going to now click on the drop down beside it and choose to view the evaluation report. Okay, and it pops up and it gives a, a crazy long date uh, value, so it's from 2001 to 2020. It seems to take a while to crank through that, so if you just want to really quickly narrow down that range even to a year uh, would help out. Make sure you include the date range uh, from when you did the assessment. And once you've done that, it might take a little while for the report to come back, but it will come back. And on the first page of the report, you'll see uh, like a mean score for for all posts, which there were two posts. They both scored 17, so that's a, a pretty good shot that the, that, that um, is correct. And then we see the analysis of the rubric. So now we're starting to see where there's possibly issues. So my own course, where I've, what I've been able to see with this is uh, early on in the course, I've seen where maybe there is some misunderstanding, uh, maybe a place where I need to uh, clarify what my expectations are. And then later in the course, by looking at the report, I've been able to see uh, that for the most part, students are getting it, and it wasn't a rubric that was designed at all to uh, maybe fit a normal curve or something. It was a rubric that was designed for uh, people who uh, put in the work to get all the points. And then you can uh, either print that report if you wanted to, or just close it. Let's take a quick review of our questions and see if we answered everything. Uh, we talked about how you could prepare your rubric to put it into Blackboard using a spreadsheet or a word processing document. We talked about actually how you can copy and paste uh, the text then into Blackboard. We talked about ways to edit the rubric including adding uh, more rows or columns to increase the number of categories or levels. Uh, we talked about uh, how you can associate your rubric with an assessment once you have your rubric set up. We talked about how you can grade using rubrics, uh, including how the students uh, enter their information into Blackboard, and then how you actually assess it, including how do you use the needs grading feature in Blackboard. And then finally we talked about how you can take a look at a rubric evaluation report and maybe it possibly leading to improvements to your rubric. If you have any comments or questions, here's my email address, my Twitter account, my Skype, and uh, please contact me. I'd like to thank uh, David Denton uh, for uh, creating the other screencast that explained rubrics, and again, encourage you to watch that. Have a great day.